Now let's look at this. Let's look at the definition. It says graphical user interface is a form of user interface that allows the uh, the user to interact with electronic devices through graphical icons. So the key ideas here are what graphical icons, the interaction with what electronic devices, and we have what audio indicator instead of what text base where you have only text and can't see any graphics. Sometimes pictures do tell more than what the text. So when you are talking about graphical user interface, the most important thing, or when defining them in your examination, is to talk about what the interaction with what the electronic device through what graphical icons, audio. That these are very important. So we can mention, we can underline what audio indicators. And they said what instead of text-based UIs, that was user interface. So put it in your head. Anytime you mean the word UI, it means what user interface. Type command labels or text navigation. So uh, basically, what we are saying is that we are not. Uh, we have moved from the text base where we have only text and moved into what we call the graphical A. Now. But don't forget, we have also moved from the graphical area. We have entered into a different interface. And very soon, we'll see how to get there. Now, as time went on, Microsoft or our other computer agencies developed what you call the desktop of a computer. Now, when you hear the word desktop, then we know when we are in school, we all use decks or we sit on decks. On your decks, what do you find there? What do you find? I know some of you have your books. You have your books on your desktop. Some of you have your pens. Did I hear someone say eraser and ruler? Yes. So we can mention what the ruler. These are all items that we can find on our desktop. But the idea was the interaction between what? The human, which is the life where and the word computer device or the electronic device. Some people will say, ah, but when we talk about desktop, are we referring to only computers? No, we are not referring to only computers, but even your mobile phones, an example is this. It has what? Its own graphical user interface. The same way the laptop or the computer you are using has its own graphical user interface. So far as you are able to communicate or interact with the electronic device through graphical means, then it is having what you call a user interface. So this user interface, when, it is, when it's on your electronic device, it becomes what? A desktop. Because it's a personal use, not um, a general use. It's a personal use. So how you modify your desktop in school could be the same way you modify your computer screen or your phone screen. So let's get to the definition and see what it says. It says a desktop is a computer display area that represents the kinds of objects one might find. It says what well, you might find on top of your physical desk, including telephones, reference or reference sources, writing and drawing tools, and project folders. So this is a general definition which tells you that what when you're talking about desktop, we are talking about what anything that mimics or a screen or a display area, which is very important, a display area that mimics or that behaves or that uh, acts as your, your physical desktop. So it mimics, behaves, or acts as your physical desktop, where you have your documents, you have your books, you can have your pens, your erasers. So the main idea is that it's what a physical or a display area that represents the kinds of objects on our physical desktop. So in our pictures, this is what we have. This is an example of a desktop or what we call a desktop of a computer. 
or as I said, you can say computer desktop. Now, before I move on, let's let me give you the distinction between the desktop computer and computer desktop. When you hear the word desktop computer, it is a reference to a computer which has a system unit, either lying flat on the desk and the monitor on it or the monitor by it. it that is what we call a desktop computer. But when you find a computer where we have the monitor and the system unit standing, that will be a tower, a tower computer. But the desktop computer lies flat. But when you say desktop of a computer or computer desktop, then we are referring to this area we have on our screens. That is the display area. Over here, we have the skies and the green land and some small, small items of which we will mention the names later. So let's go on. Let's look at it. What are the features of this desktop? The first feature that we will talk about is the icon. That is the small graphical objects lying on our left side. It's what we call icons. Then beneath the icons, we have what we call the start but we'll talk about them. But the whole bar down there is what we call the tax bar. And on the tax bar, we have what we call the system tray and the start button. By the way, the blue space or the blue display area we see, or the one with the sky, is what we call the wallpaper. The wallpaper. It can also be called the background of the computer or the background of your desktop. Now, anytime you should hear that I am changing my desktop background, it is the same as what changing your wallpaper. Now, let's take the features one after the other. The first one is icons. What are icons? Icons can be defined as the graphical representation of programs, files, and folders. So when you are in the examination hall, you come across definition of what icons, you simply say it is what? The graphical representation. Remember, we said we are looking at what? Graphical user interface. So the graphical representation of what? I, um, of folders, of documents, of programs, and files. These are what we call what? Icons. Then one example of an icon that we mentioned that we should be able to define uh, their purpose is what my computer icon on our screens to the right side you'll find the image of my computer icon this is how it looks like and this icon that we have has its purpose to be that it contains all the drives all the drives or it allows the user to have access to all the drives connected or within the computer system. So it says that icons, that my computer icons allow you to display all the disk drives and folders. So when you click on them, what you realize is that you see maybe uh, drive D, drive C, these are all parts of what your computer system or these are disk drives found in your, what, your computer. And also, some folders will be displayed there. The next one is my document. My document, as its name suggests, it's a folder used to store documents. My, my document is a folder used to store what? Documents. Now, let's say you have typed and you want to quickly save it somewhere that you can easily recall since it's a text or a word uh, file or any file that is word-like or any other thing apart from music and you can easily store it in your, your document so that you can retrieve it anytime you want there are other folders which have their which are grouped into the, its own categories we have the music we have the uh, video we have the pictures but my document as I will say, it is purposely for what your 
graphical or your document. But it says that what you can store your what videos and sound clips on the computer. You can store it in what by document. Then we come to recycle bin. These are all important icons that we can find on our desktop. And I would say any computer that you buy new or you find these three icons there because they are very important. There are other icons which can be added when you do an installation or you have other programs installed on your computer. So the next one is what? Recycle bin. Recycle bin is a folder that stores old deleted files until you may need them again. Please pay attention. This is a container or a folder that stores old deleted files or all your deleted files. Not all, because there are some files that are de deleted permanently. It cannot be found in what your cycle recycle bin. So it says what? It's a folder that stores all deleted files until you may need them again or until you delete completely. Despite the name, the deleted files are not actually deleted or they are not actually recycled unless you have to what, restore them. So if you delete a file, it will just be in the recycle bin for a long time until you decide that I want to recycle it, simply meaning you want to re reuse it. So you have to restore it. Then we have other files, which include uh, JPG and these files, the files are documents. They are generally documents that has been saved on your computer. Files are differentiated by their extensions. Every file has its extension. When you are dealing with Word, you will find the extension .docx, which is what a document file. And you can have other extensions. We have other files like JPG, which is a picture file. PNG, which is also a picture file, BP, BMP, a picture file, that's bitmap. We have the GIF, which is also a picture file. So on our screens to our side, you have other files which we can say, or we can use and also save them on our computers. Let's go to folders. What are folders? On our desktop, we realized that we said recycle bin is a folder. By document, it's a folder. When we spoke about my computer we said folders are kept in there are folders which can be located in my computer so what is a folder itself now i know most of you have seen what we call the flat file that is an example of a folder but in our terms we will call it what a flat file but a folder is a place where files and all or other files are sorry other folders are kept because there are folders which can be kept in a folder. And those folders kept in a folder will be called subfolders. So, folder is a place where files and other folders are kept. That is the definition for folders. We are not going deep into it. This is a, um, a revision. If you have to go deep, you have to go through a whole lot. Now, let's look at the tax bar. When we saw the image or the picture of the desktop, I mentioned that we have three areas. That is the background. I mentioned the icons and I said the tax bar, which houses the start button, which houses also the system tree. Now, let's look at the tax bar, the definition. It says the tax bar can be found at the bottom of the screen. At the bottom of what? The screen running from left to right of the computer screen. It contains the start button, the quick launch toolbar, and the system tray. That is the tax bar. It can be found at the bottom of what your computer screen, which runs from what left to right. And it contains the start button, the quick launch toolbar, and the system tray. So if you look over here, we have what we call the system tray. Now, 
someone will say, why do we have system tray and notification area? This is because our syllabus requires that we use either XP or Windows 7. We cannot use Windows 8 or uh, we can still use Windows Vista. We cannot use Windows 8 or 10 or any of the above Windows. Those from 8 upwards, we cannot because our syllabus restricts us to Windows 7. Now, so the one we have on our left is what we call the system tray. Now, the system tray belongs to Windows XP. And the one on our right is what we call the notification area. It belongs to Windows 7. But these two, are they are one and the same. There is no difference between the two of them. So we say that system tray or the notification area displays So over here, you can find the clock here. You can also find the clock and the date over there. So the system clock and date in addition to other programs that operate in the background when the computer is switched on. So sometimes maybe you have opened a program and it's operating in the background of the computer. Immediately you click on the system tray, this arrow over here, this arrow, what happens is that it opens the other programs for you. And when you click on the arrow, it opens the balloon drawer, this thing, the Dropbox up there for you. So you realize that they have what? Bluetooth and other things running in the background. So this is an example of, or this is a picture of what we call the system tray, the notification area. Then we have, so I'm, I'm still on the step tree. It says what? The notification area also allows you to view programs and tasks that are running in the background, of which I've already said, as well as view important messages. Yes, about updates. When you have updates, they are located in your notification area. That is when you are using Microsoft XP or Windows 7. But in Windows 8, 9, 10, above, they are using a different system. Even though they still have the notification area, they are still using a different system. Now, we have what you call the quick lunch toolbar. The quick lunch toolbar. The quick lunch toolbar is located on the tax bar. It contains icons representing specific programs, just representing a specific program. So with just a click on them, they open. You don't need to double click or right click to open. No, you just a click on them, then it launches the program for you. So that is what the quick launch tuba does. Now, let's look at the start button. The start button. The start button allows you to start programs, open documents, and search for files. That is the purpose of the start button. It has, allows you to what? open programs, document, and search for files. The picture we have here belongs to the Windows XP. So in your examination, if you should see this picture, or you see this one we have here, they are one and the same thing, but their constituents are quite different. So let's look at what they contain. Now, in the Windows XP, the first pad or the pane, that is where we have the Google Chrome, the classic menu, Minecraft, and all those things, is where you have what we call all your programs that you have opened within a specific time. That's around six days. Then we have all programs, where all the installed programs can be found. We'll look at their definitions also, so don't worry. We have the shutdown, we have the log off. Then we have to our right folders that we can also access. We can have what? By documents, we have pictures, music, games, recent items. So, every time you use any program on your computer and you want to have a log, that is the series of programs or um, whatever you have used on your computer, you can easily identify them or find them using your start button. 
When you click on the start button, you come to reset items to tell you what you have recently used or viewed. If you come to the left side also, you can it will tell you what you have been using for the past six days, what you have been using consistently or constantly. Then we have the start search or the search box. We have the search box. In the search box, if you want to find your file folder, whatever you want to find, you just key it in the search box and just click on the search, then it runs the query for you. Then let's go to the Windows 7. This for the Windows 7. Now with Windows 7, you find that it's quite different. It's similar, but quite different. The difference is that in Windows 7, we have a lot more on the left side, which are not only um, programs that you have been opening, but programs which have been what placed there for quick launch. So I'll start with what all programs. All programs displays all the programs installed on the computer. All programs displays all the programs installed on the computer. Then we have frequently used program list. The frequently used program list contains the last six programs used on the computer. And this is where we have the frequently used program list over here. They are just here. Where I have circled is where we have the frequently used program list. So the last six programs that you have used on your computer. Then we have the search box, which is the same, the same location, which is beneath the what the all programs or underneath the all programs it says the search box when a search query is entered it finds programs documents emails music and anything saved on the computer so its function is to what to search for your files stored on the computer we also have what you call the left pane the left pane which shows the list of recent programs installed on the computer. So as I said, if you look here, it is not all about what you have been using, but also what has recently been stored on what your computer. You can find it in the left pane. And there's the left pane where we have the white background. Then it says the right pane. It displays a series of buttons for quick access to common tasks. So, when we look at the right pane, if you want to go to my document, you just click on my document. If you want to go to pictures, just open it, click on pictures. If you want to go to, let's say, uh, computer, just click on computer, control panel, whatever you want to click. It's just a quick access. Just click on it and it will give you access to the other side. Then we have what we call the shutdown button. The shutdown button is located opposite or do we say adjacent towards the search box that is now now when you click on the shutdown it does not give you only it does not shut your computer down automatically but it gives you options to choose and some of the options include restart we have sleep we have hibernate, we have lock, we have log off, and we have switch user. So when we talk about computer desktop, basically we are talking about the screen, the display area of your computer screen, and the features of them. I said they include what? The icons, we have the tax bar, and we have what? The background. We said the icons, they include icons are what graphical representation of what files, folders, documents, whatever. And we said um, there are also programs too. And we said if you look, if you check the next to the tax bar is a bar which is located beneath the what the screen of the what your screen uh, your display screen. And it runs from what left to right. Some of the features of the tax bar include the start button we have what the system tray or notification area 
and we said the system tray and or notification area has what we call the time the date and some programs which are running in the background and we said another feature or another use of the system tray is that it displays what updates or important messages of updates of our computer also if you want to change the date and time it's quite easy just click on your date and time it will pop up for you when it pops up you can easily click on adjust time and date then you'll be given the opportunity to adjust your time and your date okay we have come to the end of our practice now let's do a little speed test but before then let's take a, sh a short commercial break we'll be back still be Just a click away on your phone, tablet, and computer. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Joy Learning TV and watch our recorded lessons. The Revision Show is now live on Joy Learning TV on your multi TV Digibox and on Facebook at Joy Learning TV. Every pro update on our educative programs as well as fun concepts. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Joy Learning TV and on Instagram at Official Joy Learning TV. Joy Learning, keep learning. Just a click away on your phone, tablet, and computer. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Joy Learning TV and watch our recorded lessons. The Revision Show is now live on Joy Learning TV on your multi TV Digibox and on Facebook at Joy Learning TV. Every pro update on our educative programs as well as fun concepts. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Joy Learning TV and on Instagram at Official Joy Learning TV. Joy Learning, keep learning. Just a click away on your Welcome back, but here next. As I said before, we went on break, we are up for a speed test. Now, here are the rules. I have 13 sets of questions. I'll be reading them out for you. And I will give you three minutes. Remember, it's a speed test. You want to see who is fast. Like a fastest figures when you are entering credit. So, speed test. We have three minutes to answer this 13 set of questions. The one who answers more questions wins. Within the three minutes please within the three minutes so i'll read out the questions to you i'll be streaming the questions on the screen too then we'll be doing the countdown then at the end of three minutes we'll start receiving your calls your beautiful producer is on standby yeah she's just waiting for you and we are also waiting for my answers <laughs> okay so this is the set of questions the first set of questions Starting from question one, it says the part of the computer which displays information to users in soft copy form is there. The part of the computer which displays information to the user in soft copy form is there. A. Monitor. B. Printer. C. Processor. D. Scanner. Question two. The sharpness of an image on a monitor display is determined by the number of A inches b pit c pixels d units the sharpness of an image on a monitor screen is determined by the number of a inches b pits c pixels and d units question three the area of the tax bar that displays small programs such as the system clock is the a programs area b scroll bar 
C, stock menu. D, system tray. Taking the question again. The area of the tax bar that displays small icons of some programs such as system clock is A, programs. Programs area. B, scroll bar. C, start menu. D, system tray. Question four. GUI stands for A, grand user interface. B, general user interface. C, graphic user interface. And D, graphical user interrupt. Question five. The horizontal bar that normally lies at the bottom of the computer desktop screen is called A, the tax bar, B, the start button, C, the horizontal ruler, D, quick launch tool bar. Taking question five again, the horizontal bar that, question six, changing the desktop wallpaper of a computer is termed A, background change b editing the computer c customizing the computer d formatting the desktop question seven the bar on the desktop which displays opened applications and other icons is referred to as a scroll bar b tax bar c title bar and d tool bar Question eight, to remove unwanted shortcuts from the computer desktop, which of the following options will be appropriate? I, click on the shortcut icon and press delete on the keyboard. I, I, drag the shortcut icon into the recycle bin and I, 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 right click on the shortcut icon and select delete on the pop-up menu. So the options are A, I and I, I only, B, I and I, I, I only, C, I, I and I, I, I only, D, I, I, I and I, I, I only. Question nine. The following are items located on the tax bar except A, date, B, clock, C, recycle bin. D, start menu button. Question 10. Files are kept, are best kept in A, icons, B, programs, C, folders, and D, applications. Question 11. A user can arrange icons by I, date, I, I, type. I, 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 name, I, V, color. The options are A, I and I, I only. B, I, I, I and I, I, I only. C, I, I, I and I, V only. D, I, 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 I and I, V only. Question 12. Which of the following tools gives the user a log of all open applications. Which of the following tools gives the user a log of all open applications? A, tax bar. B, title bar. C, start menu. D, start button. The last question, which is the colorful background work area that covers the entire computer screen is called A, wallpaper. B, desktop. C, window a d dialog box hello benedicta sir yes sir blessed it benedicta how are you very fine how was are oh, you on vacation though yes okay vacation classes okay that's very good so let's start from question one what's your answer let's start monitor a okay Question and two. Number two, C. C. Question three. I can't see the question. The area of the tax bar that displays small icons of some programs such as the system clock is A. System tray. Okay. Question four. 
The question. GUI stands for? Graphical User Interface. Question five. Question six. The question, please. You have one minute, 30 seconds left. Question six. Changing the desktop wallpaper of a computer is termed. Background change. Question seven. You have some few seconds left. Forty seconds left. Question eight. I can't see the question. To remove unwanted shortcuts from the desktop, which of the following options will be appropriate? I click on the shortcut icon once and Press the lid or the keyboard. I I drag the shortcut icons into the recycle bin. I I I right click on the shortcut icons and select the deleted pop up. You have 10 seconds left. B. 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 Time is up. You said what? D. B. 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 Hello. 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 Will you just click away on your phone? tablet and computer subscribe to our youtube channel at joy learning tv and watch our recorded lessons the revision show is now live on joy learning tv on your multi tv digibox and on facebook at joy learning tv every pro update on our educative programs as well as fun concepts follow us on twitter and facebook at joy learning tv and on instagram at official joy learning tv joy learning keep learning We are sorry once again for our technical hitches. Please pardon us and keep calling. Keep calling. And please, the first caller had eight marks. Eight out of the eight questions she answered. Now, so, Percy. <laughs> Percy. Hello, Percy. Yes. How are you today? I'm fine. Okay. Are you ready for our answers? Yes. Okay. So question one. What's the answer? Monitor. Question two. Unit. Question three. Please, question. Question three. The area of the tax bar that displays icons, small icons of some programs such as the system clock is A, program area, B, scroll bar, C, start menu, D, system tray. System tree. Question four. 
GUI stands for a graphic user interface. Okay, question five. The horizontal bar that normally lies. Yes. Uh -huh. What's the answer? Task bar. Question six. Changing the desktop wallpaper of a computer is termed. Is termed back, uh, background change. Okay. If you can. If you can answer, mention the letter, the answer to the letter for me, I'll be glad. Okay. The bar of the bar on the desktop which displays open application and other icons is referred to as. You, you have less than one minute more. To remove unwanted shortcuts from the desktop, which of the following options will be appropriate? I click on the shortcut icon once and Delete. Delete A. A. Question 9. The following are. You have 20 seconds. The following are items located on the default tax bar, except. Recycle B. Question 10. You have 5 seconds. Pardon? Please, the answer is folded. Okay, so it's up. You answered 10 questions. And you had eight questions correct. You had eight questions correct. You have done really well. So we now have someone answering 10 questions, getting eight. Another person answering eight questions, getting what, eight marks. So keep calling, keep calling. Let's see who can win today. I have a handsome surprise for you. Brian. Yes, sir, please. How are you doing today? Please, I'm all right. You're all right. I hope you attended your vacation classes. Yes, please. Okay. So are you ready for the questions? Yes, please. What's let's start. So question one. What's your answer? A monitor. Monitor. Okay. Question two. C pixel. Pixel. Question three. D system tray. Question four. C graphic user interface. Question five. A tag bar. Question six. A background change. Question seven. B tag bar. Question eight. C I I N I I I. Question nine. C recycling bin. Question ten. C folder. Question eleven. Eleven B. Pardon? Eleven B. Okay. Question twelve. A tag bar. You have thirty seconds. The number three. Number thirteen is A. Number twelve. Number twelve. A tag bar. Number thirteen. A. Okay, you have beaten the time. You have set your first record, but unfortunately, you have two wrongs. You had two mistakes. That is making you the highest scorer for now. That is 11 marks. You are our winner for today. Please, thank you. Which school do you attend? Please, Hope Academy International. Hope Academy International. Where is it located? Please, I should Pardon? Please, Central Region. I Cent okay, now when you are done, please, when we are done, call this number. Write the number down. All right. 055 055 863 863 3684. 3684. Yes, I'm taking it again. 055 863 3684. Okay. We are done for today, and let's all give a clap for him. He has done really well. 13 questions, and he answered to 11. Brian has won for the day. Brian, you've made Hope Academy proud. Hope Academy. Tomorrow, we come your way with wonderful prizes and wonderful questions. Let's see who can win tomorrow's prize.
and myself i'll be adding more prices to it so make sure you are following us on instagram at what official joy learning tv and on facebook on twitter on instagram sorry on tiktok at what joy learning tv and on youtube too you can still follow us at what joy learning tv till we meet again my name is always isaac or here it's bye bye